Hi everybody, my name is Dara and this is Dear Hallmark. This is a space where I nerd and I geek out over Hallmark Channel movies, TV shows, and stuff. And we're going to be talking about Welcome to Mamas. It is the last movie in Hallmark's Love You Weary lineup and it stars Melanie Scrifano and Daniel DiTomaso. Um, the premise, really quick, is that Melanie plays a character named Amy who is in a, when we meet her, she is a restaurant assistant manager, but she gets a call that one of her mother, one of the, not one of, but the mother figure of her life, Mama, who owned a restaurant, she has passed and she learns that she has been given the restaurant to own. And so Amy works through trying to revitalize the restaurant and bumps head with, bumps heads with the head chef who is played by Daniel DiTomaso, his name is Frank. And so as she's trying to revitalize Mamas, um, cause she sees that Frank has made a lot of changes, she finds uh, her cookbook, Mama's cookbook. And through reliving those moments and those recipes, finding out where those classics came from, uh, she kind of finds herself again and also rekindle her, her relationship with Mama. Um, Y'all, this movie was so good. I didn't know what to expect going in. I never have seen anything with the two actors before. I don't. I believe this is their Hallmark debut. But I love this movie so much. This movie played more towards the sentimental than the romantic in terms of Italian culture and family. I got a real sense for for me um, of Italian culture and family from this. Oh, and the woman who plays Mama, I believe her name is Lorena Bracco, I believe her name is. Her voice is like comfort food. Her voice is a bowl of pasta. It's espresso. It's a cannoli. Her voice is so comforting and warm. The rasp of it all. I loved it so much. You guys, my favorite part was the scene where we meet, where we see how Mama and Papa met and they were speaking completely in Italian. <laughs> that messed me up because, uh, oh my gosh, I, the Italian language is what, I've always wanted to learn it. Uh, let me start there. I've always wanted to learn the Italian language. like. Freshman year, <laughs> freshman year in college, um, I'd signed up to take an Italian language course. But mind you, my background was in Spanish, Just like middle school and high school, all I took was Spanish. So I'm going into this Italian class, just like, let's get it, let's learn some more language, right? And I'm bombing on all cylinders. However, the professor, whose Italian accent was struggle than a he said that I was great at the pronunciation of it all and speaking it, but the actual mechanics of the language in terms of verb conjugation, grammar, writing it and making it be um, literate sentences, <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Like complete sentences, I was failing. And I dropped the class mid semester <laughs> and then just took up with Spanish. But I really, like, I wanted to change my Duolingo from Spanish to Italian at the end of this movie. I was like, you better stop. You better stop. I really, man, man, oh, man, man, oh, man. Can I tell you? Ever since, because this also, this is the third Italian movie that we've gotten in a row from Hallmark. The first one was Wedding Veil vale Unveiled. Then we got uh, Wedding Veil vale Legacy, in which our leading man, he owns, he's, he's Italian-American, comes from an Italian family running an Italian restaurant. So there's that. And then we get this. Can I tell you, I've been cooking pasta in the interim. I've been perfecting some pasta recipes. Um, like concocting different sauces. I want to graduate to learning how to make fresh pasta, but I've really like gotten into this pasta kick. I promise you, you can ask my housemate. Like I have been, it's been really, really good. Like there's with the fettuccine, the one thing with the fettuccine though, I need to perfect the cooking time on it because it still comes off a little bit like a tinge too hard for me. So I have to perfect my cooking time with that, but I make the fettuccine with this, uh, with spinach and a lemon butter sauce or lemon garlic butter sauce. Ah! And then um, this past Sunday, I started with a penne recipe with red sauce, 
um, and I put arugula in that one. And I'm just having so much fun cooking Italian food. <laughs> and these movies are putting me in the spirit. And even like learning some Italian words um, that don't get me so easily confused with the Spanish equivalent. Um, so like the Spanish word for let's go is vamanos, right? In Italian, it's andiamo. And then let's eat, I believe it's called, is it to eat, comer. Comida is food. Comer, I think to eat. So comemos, I think is let's eat. Whereas in Italian, it's mangiamo. Because that's the, that's the, um, that was the word that Amy said to the table when they were doing their Friday night supper club, which I love. I want to start a supper club. Oh my gosh, I am getting ideas. But when she said mangiamo, I said, oh, I'm using that. And I'm teaching that to my nieces. Because I, <laughs> I hope I don't mess them up too much. I taught one of my nieces um, the Spanish word for auntie, which is tia. So sometimes she'll call me tia dara <laughs> when she wants to be fancy. Um, and so I'll say mangiamo. So if you ever want to say auntie, let's eat, you can say auntie, mangiamo. Anywho, I got off on a mad tangent. You see what this movie inspired in me? I loved the parallel timeline of um, the present day with Amy and Frank, but also learning the history of Mama and how her and Papa met, how she came to the restaurant, how Papa supported her, and even seeing Amy and Mama's restaurant through the year, I mean, um, relationship through the years, like... And even the cause of the rift that was in their relationship. But at the same time, seeing Amy and Frank's relationship or friendship at that time grow, but also knowing that there was, they've had this attraction to one another. Because when, when he saw her in the cafe, he was like, oh, snap. To what do my eyes behold? <laughs> um, I really love this movie. The one scene that made me holler out loud in protest was, spoiler alert. Um, I'm going to just put spoiler, whatever, y'all know. I'm talking about the movie. Um, so towards the end, Frank, you know, he was, he was, um, what's the word? He was up to here with Amy's changes, couldn't take it anymore. So he went to look for another job and he didn't give them, he didn't give the guy, I think it was called Reggio's. He didn't give that guy an answer yet. Reggio gonna come down to the restaurant a la mama. And in front of Amy, and say, yo, you are a hard man to track down. So what what are we doing about this this gig? Like, what do I have to do to make you come be my head chef at my restaurant? I said, why would you do that right there? I'm sure he told you where he was currently cooking at the time. So you gonna come there and just, like, how rude is that? That is so ignorant. Like, I can't imagine, like, I just, oh God. That just was mad ignorant to me. I just didn't appreciate that. But that aside, because, um, you know, they needed some sort of conflict. I love the ending. I love that it, it felt full circle. Like, I loved how their Amy and Frank's relationship mimicked Mama and Papa's in a way. <sighs> y'all, I really like this movie. I really like this movie. What did y'all think about it? I, I was perusing through the Facebook and Instagram streets of the Hallmark Channel. Some people thought it was slow and that the actors didn't have chemistry with one another. I think they were fine. Um, they are both really good actors. And I felt like they did their job. And they did a good job at that. Uh, so the, I think the question we have to ask ourselves is, when are we going to Italy? That's the million dollar question because I feel like Hallmark is trying to tell me something with the amount of uh, Italian movies they're giving to us in this concentrated amount of time. We already got an air date for Tyler and Autumn's uh, Always Amore, which I'm going to talk about on the podcast for my, um, my preview. Y'all, so who's going to Italy? Whose bag do I need to sneak in? What, what are we doing with that? But what did you guys think of this movie? Did you like it? Did you not care for it? Did you think they had chemistry? Was it too sentimental? Was it too slow? Was it perfect? Was it amore? What did you think about it? I do think this was a different... Because we, we've all seen the restaurant and the cooking 
movies, right? But I feel like this was done in such a fresh way, which is why I liked it so much. And so I would give this four, uh, four and a half crowns, four crowns, four crowns, four crowns. Well, you guys, I love y'all. Thank you so much for watching Dear Hallmark. Be sure to subscribe here on the YouTube channel. Subscribe to the podcast. There's a link in the show notes description box for that. Follow Dear Hallmark on the Instagram because I go live and I don't save them. So there's that. And there have been twice, two times where two Hallmark actors have popped in. That's all I'm saying. And it's not planned. I promise you, I just be minding my Dara business. And then they just pop in on the live and they'd be like, what's up? And I'm like, oh, hey. So there's that. Let me know your thoughts. I look forward to talking with you guys. The next, you are going to get another video from me this week. I'm going to be doing a love you -ary ranking along with a February ranking because I watched all of the movies from Hallmark, Up TV, and GAC for the month of February. So I'm going to do a separate love you -ary, you know, ranking, but also in the same video, like I'm going to also do a February movie ranking. So you'll see where those Hallmark movies fared compared to the Up TV and GAC movies. All right, y'all. I will talk to you guys in the next video.